It's just us. There's nobody else here. hospitality we've ever experienced. Best breakfast I've had in a long time. It is the morning of day three and our last moments in Castilla y Leon. As soon as we cross the river from this town, we end up in Galicia. So there's four abandoned houses in this town and apparently once a year the previous residents get together and have a feast together. So it's day three. We've been hiking out of Puente de Domingo Flores. <laughs> I got it. For the past, I don't know, hour or two. It's a really lovely, what's the word? It's an undulating river path. It's really easy kilometers. If you get started in the morning, it feels really great with a little crisp air. Especially with a belly full of really great breakfast. That breakfast is so good. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is like probably 90% of why we like to walk so much. The breakfast is amazing. <laughs> We're caffeinated and full. They're building an albergue here in Sobradello. I think that's great. More albergues mean there's more places for pilgrims to stay here because as we're looking at planning our routes, sometimes you're just really limited to where the albergues are unless you want to stay at a Casa Rural, but not all the Casa Rurals are open for the season yet. Coffee stop in Sobradelo at a Bar Mar. The guy really loves pilgrims. Got a stamp, had a big coffee. In the span of the like half hour we were in there, it was blue skies and now it's cloudy. So, yeah. we uh -oh. got We got some rain moving in, so we gotta go. It's not always beautiful. Always a little road walking on the Camino. Luckily it's day three and this is our first real stretch of road walk, so. Little bit of rain up here at the top of the hill, but we are in our rain gear. Lainey's ready to go. A nice Galician welcome to the uh, to the area. Oh yeah, killing it. First day in Galicia means first day of rain on the Camino. Oh, he's coming. Feeling end of a long day? Really long day. The most concrete we've had so far. Exhausted. Cannot wait to get to the municipal albergue. And uh, but look, yeah, it's like right there. This place has got some good landscape value. As the sign said, thank you. Weird translations. Okay, let's go. VIP access, baby. So this is the off season. It's like totally under construction. This is the albergue we're gonna let ourselves in. He gave us a bunch of instructions to get in. And I'm pretty sure it's just us again tonight. Private albergue. 
The fire's on. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is big. We are gonna unpack, call the uh, hospitalero, and see what happens. 28 beds just for us. Is there another fire in here? I thought I saw flickering. Yeah, there's another fire in here. Royal treatment this place is. This is gigantic, and there's so much space between the beds, too. They have little pouches. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's just us again, three nights in a row, three albergues. It's only eight euros per person here. Because it's the off season, we call them ahead of time and WhatsApp the number that was in the guidebooks to say, hey, like, please expect two pilgrims tonight. Good thing we did, because then he sent us a barrage of video and like voice memos yeah. of like how to get in here and like making sure we knew the place and to know that only the men's room is hot water right now. It's a really different experience for a municipal albergue. I mean, a lot of people think of the Camino and you think of this communal nature and just being with other pilgrims, but we haven't seen a single other pilgrim. It's not just that we haven't seen them at the albergues. Period. There's no one on the trail except for people who live in the villages. Yeah. Really interesting, really fun to be on a, our own pilgrimage with literally no one else. Winter Camino, Invierno, in the Invierno. There it is. Oh! Oh! <laughs> is it kicking on? Now that the fan Great. is on. So it's about 8 a.m. and we are getting ready to leave the Municipal Albergue because we have a huge day today. We have to go a little over 30 kilometers because there's just no other places to stop. So we'll see what we're gonna do. I'm tired and sore and got two blisters, but the day outside looks gorgeous. And I think the terrain is gonna be a pretty doable day compared to those first two. We just cooked food last night and ate a huge bowl of pesto and pasta and chickpeas and chilled out here because we were just exhausted. And this albergue is on the other side of the railroad tracks and next to the river than the rest of the town. So it's kind of like a longish walk to get any food once you're here. Just FYI, if you do stay here. It's not cold, it's refreshing. It's kind of cold. What a beautiful morning. What a beautiful morning. You have frost all over your face. <laughs> so do you, Sean. Frosty face. Yeah, this place is closed. So the search continues. Our copy. So we're gonna walk through town instead of on the Camino because this is our last chance to get anything for at least 25 kilometers to Quiroga. This is what I look like when I go through town. Super normal. <laughs> I don't look like a murderer with a runny nose. <laughs> get out of Arua. Oh my gosh, it's kind of dangerous road walking too. Ugh. I don't like when the Camino does that. But now we're on a one lane road and the views are really nice. We've been hiking for most of the morning uphill on this little sort of service country road. Not a lot of traffic. Although the beginning is a little hairy. And now we're about to step foot into Lugo, the second of four Galician provinces on the Camino Invierno. So we're all finished with Orense and on to Lugo. <laughs> So we're still on the medieval cart track. 
And this part is where they carved the road into the stone. Lainey loves ruts in stone. It's like her thing. Old ruts, like ancient You're nuts wheels. for ruts. Rut, another rut here. More ruts there. <laughs> we got our t-shirts on, sun's out, guns out, sunglasses, hat backwards. Winter Camino, my butt. Tell us why it's called the Winter Camino. Well, the weather is milder through the Seal River Valley because of the microclimates. You can expect cold mornings and warmer days and not a lot of snow or any typically. So Winter Camino, you bypass the bad weather in the Lugo Mountains. All I heard was blah, 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 bring a t-shirt. <laughs> version of the horseshoe bend. Oh, it's bouncing off it like a mirror right now. Coming into Quiroga, Quiroga. Sun's going down, it's been a long day. We're heading to a hostel because the uh, municipal albergue is not open. There's a lot of misinformation about that. So we booked a place. We're gonna settle in for a nice, cozy, quiet night. Cool. Bye bye, sun. This guest house rocks. <laughs> 32 euros off season pilgrim special for. Well, she gave us a one bedroom suite. We have a whole separate room out here with two more beds. Uh, we'll see about tackling today. My knee and feet aren't feeling too great, to be honest. So I'm not sure if we'll make it all the way to where we intend to go. We're in Quiroga right now. There's not a lot of options from here till Monforte de Lemos, which is in 36 kilometers. This morning started with this just beautiful river walk. It was a road walk, admittedly, which I don't love road walking, but it does mean the grade steepness is pretty gentle. But now we are climbing pretty rapidly on a logging road, saying goodbye to the Seal River Valley. So we head to Monforte de Lemos. I'm not feeling awesome, but I'm trying. We'll see how today goes. for the long slog from Quiroga to Monforte de Lemos, you have to bring lots of snacks. We found these cookies and they're local. They're from Ribadavia, which is near Orense. And I was like, oh, Galicia cookies, yum. And they are anise flavored. They're so good. So Galicia is delicia. See what I did there? It's delicious. <laughs> You gotta take little breaks throughout the day when you find a nice little spot of grass. Makes things go a lot smoother. Fill up your water, have a snack, look at the river. That's what it's all about. <sighs> and you get to make that noise. <laughs> he 
might be dancing in that video, but really we're just looking for a picnic spot. We're really hungry. <laughs> and I still have ways to go today. Wow, it's so beautiful up here. Found this lovely little footpath. About 10k from Monforte. Feeling good. Still some light left in the day. It's crazy how much we look like this. <laughs> Just keep on walking faster. There's a cow on the road and we're trying to get past it, but it keeps running. And then all the other cows started yelling. The stampede will begin. And now they're all getting up and walking this way because they're cows. And the herd mentality is strong. <laughs> So hopefully we can get around this freaking cow. <laughs> Let us get around you. I can't get around. We did it. Higher landscape value. <laughs> so let's take it. We did it. 36 kilometers, I think is my longest Camino day ever. In the beginning of the day <laughs> this morning, I thought I couldn't make it. I literally didn't think I would. I'm not sure if we'll make it all the way to where we intend to go. I thought I would just give up and take a cap, but I'm really proud that I did this, even though the last like three kilometers took like an hour, <laughs> probably Long, more. Longer than that. Yeah, I was like barely walking. <sighs> I want to die right now. <laughs> this is the reality of the Camino. It seems like it's so fun and sunshine, but like you're walking a lot. Even if there was a lot of good roads, there was still a lot of asphalt today. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of myself. I'm proud of us. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that Sean was so positive in helping me and pulling me through this. Woo! Yeah, I don't think I would have done it without him making sure I was okay. Laney out. Yeah, they're like, how'd you get out? Tell me the secret. Her friends are like following her. Look, they're all getting up. We're starting a problem. I didn't mean to make a problem. Girl. That's her friend. They're all coming. 